Do you get the sense that the Minecraft community isn't quite right? Whenever I go to places where Minecraft is being discussed, there's so much anger, so much vitriol. I think you know what I'm talking about. There's a growing sense that we're becoming a more harsh, aggressive, and hostile community. Obviously not all of us, but I don't think I'm alone when I say I've sensed a trend. Hop on Twitter, Reddit, YouTube, it kinda doesn't matter. I feel like people are angrier than they've ever been. I've been playing Minecraft for well over a decade, and I can't recall a time when the rhetoric was quite like this. It pains me to see what this community is doing to itself. And I've started to wonder, why is that? How did we get here? And I think maybe, just maybe, I have some explanations. Let's go back in time. Specifically, let's circle October 3rd, 2020. This was the date when the Minecraft Live 2020 livestream occurred. For those of you out of the loop, Minecraft Live is an annual event hosted by Mojang, the developer of Minecraft. It used to be in person, but for obvious reasons the 2020 version was livestream only. There are many parts to the show, including commentary by developers and content from the community. The main event, however, is the announcement of what's going to be in the next Minecraft update. The features announced in 2020 were, well, amazing. It's the Caves and Cliffs update. The theme of 1.17 was Caves and Cliffs. After years and years of waiting, the cave update was finally announced. There would be several brand new biomes. This included lush caves with brand new plants and the spectacular dripstone caves with stalagmites and stalactites. The cave shapes would be completely revamped with the possibility for huge spaces and waterfalls. Amethyst geodes would be a rare find. There was even the addition of a brand new metal, copper, the first new ore in nearly eight years. This copper could be used to create a telescope and lightning rods, finally providing a way to protect wooden houses against thunderstorms. As a building material, it oxidized over time, slowly changing its color to green. But it didn't stop there. An entirely new system called archaeology was announced. Players would be able to craft a brush and find dig sites, using the brush to discover ancient artifacts. Pottery shards could be unearthed and used to create new custom clay pots. The star of the show was the new Deep Dark biome. It contained a strange material called Skulk. Skulk sensors could operate as wireless redstone, fulfilling yet another long-requested feature. Within the Deep Dark was a terrifying new mob, the Warden, which was totally blind and used sound to hunt, a fascinating concept. It was so strong that it could quickly kill even a player with full netherite armor. For the first time in years, there was something to be afraid of in Minecraft. That wasn't all though. Mojang had listened to the community's long-standing concerns with inventory bloat and had created a solution. Bundles, which were sacks that could hold multiple items. By the way, candles were also spotted, another requested feature. Oh, and did you think that the mountains in Minecraft were too small? Well, Mojang addressed that too, with totally revamped mountain generation. There was even a new type of snow and the addition of mountain goats. And the cherry on top was the introduction of the axolotl, a new mob that would help players fight underwater and could even heal them. Needless to say, the hype was through the roof. I can't recall another time people were this excited. So many new features, and lots of them had been on the community's wish list for a long time. A cave update? New inventory management? A challenging boss? Mountains that were actually big? The promises were so unexpected, so grandiose, and so requested that the community was elated. This was shaping up to be one of the best Minecraft updates ever. And it came at a great time too. After the misery and exhaustion of COVID, there was finally something to look forward to. A light at the end of a long and dark tunnel. The features announced for 1.17 were ambitious. Too ambitious, as it turned out. In April of 2021, it was announced that Caves and Cliffs would be split up into Part 1 and Part 2. There were good reasons. Mojang felt that they couldn't deliver the update on time at a high quality level. And we have realized that if we don't release some of the features, the more like complex features in Holiday, there's a risk that they will not be in like a good enough quality. This was compounded by the considerable technical challenges that arose from the huge changes to world generation. The final issue was that releasing all of the announced features would potentially compromise development team health, especially important during the continued pandemic. With the Caves and Cliffs update, we realized if we're gonna release all the features in the summer, we would have to crunch a lot, and we shouldn't, and we, like, we don't want to force anyone to work overtime. So it's much better to make sure that the team feel as good as possible and are as happy as possible. The solution was that Caves and Cliffs Part 1 would introduce the new blocks and mobs, giving developers more time to solve the technical issues in Part 2. While this change was disappointing, the community overall was very supportive of Mojang. Mojang provided three really good reasons for the delay, and they were especially understandable given the recent botched launches of games like Cyberpunk 2077. 
If it took more time to prevent a fiasco like that, then so be it. Caves and Cliffs Part 1 was released June of 2021, and it contained the expected features. A relatively small update, but worth it if it meant that future updates would shine. But some cracks started to show during the 2021 edition of Minecraft Live, streamed on October 16th. It was announced that the Deep Dark and the Warden would not be coming to Caves and Cliffs. It had been delayed to the following update, the Wild Update. There was also no mention of archaeology or bundles, and when Caves and Cliffs Part 2 was released in November, these features were both missing. But not to worry, the Wild Update was going to have some fun new ideas, including a more fleshed out Deep Dark. There would also be the Mangrove Swamp biome. In these swamps, the Wild Update's signature new mobs could be found, frogs and fireflies. The frogs would even eat the fireflies in a very charming animation. Oh yeah, also their frog food. Yeah, I forgot to mention that, their frog food. These types of interactions would contribute to a stated goal for the Wild Update, finding unique identities for biomes. Another such biome would be the Birch Forest, which would be light and peaceful with taller trees, flowers, and other adjustments. The 1.19 update was released in June of the following year. It did include the Deep Dark and the Warden, as well as several other features not announced in 2020, like the Ancient Cities. These changes were well received. Despite the extended delay, the Deep Dark had been expanded and improved far beyond what was initially announced. Unfortunately though, there were still no bundles and no archaeology to be found. But more concerning was the fact that 1.19 was lacking features that had been announced at this year's Minecraft Live. Fireflies, a fan favorite, were missing from the final version. The reasoning? Fireflies was originally part of the plan for the Wild Update. We wanted them to be a food source for the new frogs. But then we got great feedback from you guys in a lovely community, and you taught us that a lot of species of fireflies and firebugs that are out there are poisonous to toads and frogs. And of course, we didn't want to add that into our game. So we provided the frogs with a safer food source, the tiny slimes. And fireflies are sadly no longer part of the plans for the wild update. That's right, an entire mob was removed because they were poisonous to frogs. To many in the community, this explanation felt hollow. Why not just make the frogs not eat the fireflies? Was this really a good enough reason to cut the mob altogether? The irony is that the replacement food source was magma cubes, which are eaten to produce a frog light. Wouldn't frogs eating molten magma also be bad for them? The reasoning provided by Moying confounded many players. But fireflies weren't the update's only missing feature. Remember that birch forest improvement Agnes talked about? That was gone too. Why? At Minecraft Live, we did show some concept art with birch forest improvements. However, concept art is not a commitment, and this time around, birch forest improvement is not something that we have continued working with. Now, let's go back and take a listen to Agnes during the announcement. We also have, want to focus, or have focused on biome diversity. So we want to find like a unique identity for different biomes. For example, the birch forest, as you can see in this beautiful concept art. So in the birch forest, we want it to be like light and peaceful, and the sun reaches the ground, the trees are taller, and the flower, flowers, things like that. It's really beautiful. It looks very Swedish in the birch forest. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's actually a very Swedish forest. Why spend so much time talking about something that's just a concept? Why mention that a focus for the update is finding unique identities for different biomes, and then give several specific details about how the birch forest would be a great example of that? Then to suddenly say, Concept art is not a commitment. Well, that calls into question the entire live stream. At best, it's clumsy. At worst, it's disingenuous. Isn't everything we're seeing on screen a concept? Can we trust Moyang when they say anything? The tone felt really demeaning, like we were being talked down to for what was a very logical thing to assume would be added. And I think this was an inflection point of sorts in terms of the growing community discontent. The positive goodwill towards Moyang had begun to evaporate. People started to realize that this was not the only error they'd committed. It had been well over a year and a half since Caves and Cliffs was announced, and there were still major features that were nowhere in sight. Archaeology? Forget it. They haven't mentioned it since 2020. Bundles? Who knows? It seems as though Moying no longer cares about inventory management problems. And now, features that have been recently announced are also getting cut, with unsatisfactory reasoning? Wouldn't figuring out if lightning bugs were poisonous to frogs take about 15 minutes of research? Why even mention the Birch Forest on a show specifically designed to provide announcements about a future update? Did they not think these features through? Are the Moying developers incapable of implementing these features? Or are the announcements intentionally misleading? 
But just one month after the 1.19 update was released, gasoline was about to be thrown on the simmering community sentiment. A new feature was announced for 1.19.1 Java Edition, chat reporting. In a break of long-standing Java Minecraft tradition, it would soon be possible to report other players in online sessions, even on private servers. These reports would be seen by a team of investigators who could dole out punishment as they saw fit. While similar systems exist in most online games, some of the community felt that Mojang's implementation had issues. Take, for example, the reporting categories. You can report a player for promoting alcohol, a substance that is legal in almost every country in the world. There's a category for false information. Would claiming that you saw Herobrine in your world get you banned? What about profanity? What counts as profanity? The lack of context and detail regarding this system bothered many. It would be easy enough for there to be a message that, in isolation, appeared to be a threat to others. Saying that you're going to kill someone in a PvP match could be taken out of context and reported as a serious threat. Some in the community feared the worst, and the initial lack of transparency by Mojang did not help. And the negativity and anger was amplified beyond where it had ever been. On YouTube, the videos went on and on, with major creators expressing their displeasure with the change. Some pronounced a dark future for the game. They lambasted the terrible rules, a terrible feature, a failure. You will get banned. This is the end of Minecraft. Things are getting worse. Microsoft is destroying Minecraft. Does Minecraft not have much time left? Minecraft is ruined. Minecraft's downfall has begun. Minecraft is dying. It's still dying. It's already dead. Minecraft bedrock sucks. Minecraft isn't fun anymore. Oh yeah, did you hear Microsoft will delete Java? No, seriously, Java is canceled. It's ending. Your Minecraft accounts are being deleted. <sighs> okay, listen. Yes, there are some valid criticisms of the game and the way that Mojang has handled itself. But there's something else at work here, a negativity bias. Negative videos get more clicks, more engagement. We pay more attention to negative headlines than positive ones. You clicked on this very video because it works. Negativity is addicting, our brains want it. And while that doesn't mean there can't be negative things, it's possible to go too far with it. And this synergizes with an overall negative community sentiment. When people are upset at Mojang, they make negative content, which causes the community to further refine their negativity, which provides even more of an audience for additional negative content. And the cycle continues. If it goes on long enough, the negativity starts to become way too big for the issue at hand. Is chat reporting different from what had been done traditionally? Yeah, of course. Did it have potential issues? Sure. But it was done with the intention of keeping people safe from the dangers of online gaming, it wasn't some diabolical plan, I do believe it genuinely had good intentions. But if you look at the community, you'd think that Mojang had removed the creeper or something. The response was way overblown for the issue at hand. That was the state of the Minecraft community. We were prepared for negativity and we viewed the world through that lens. Five months later, Minecraft Live 2022 occurred. This time, Mojang changed how they approached the announcements for the new updates. Having learned from the past mistakes of overpromising and underdelivering, this Minecraft Live would only show features that were far in the development process, presumably close to being released in a snapshot. While this was logical, it did result in a set of announcements that felt somewhat underwhelming. There were new default skins, bamboo wood, hanging signs, camels, and, well, that's about it. Unsurprisingly, there was some disappointment. To many, the lack of announcements felt underwhelming. And while it did cause damage in the long run, I think some of us missed that sense of hype from 2020 when several long-requested features were announced. And it once again brought to the forefront the continued and consistent failure to deliver features from that show. It had been two full years, and there wasn't so much as a hint of bundles. Things announced now were just retextured wood, new skins, a slightly different horse. Why even bother talking about the update of Minecraft Live? Would it have been better to just say nothing? Now we reach Minecraft Live 2023, which was just a few months prior to the release of this video. This was the shortest Minecraft Live, lasting only 50 minutes. And I have some doubts as to how much of it was actually live at all, but that's a different conversation. Few new features were shown. Once again, only things that were relatively close to completion. This shortened presentation format brought more focus onto an element that I haven't been mentioning much, the mob votes. The Minecraft Live tradition is to present several potential mobs that could be added to the game and have the community vote on which one they like the best. This system has had its fair share of controversies, perhaps most memorably with the Dream situation in 2020. Since then, the mob votes had ballooned in popularity, with turnout increasing each consecutive year. While there is some advantage to the community getting to decide the future of Minecraft, there's a clear disadvantage as well. Two-thirds of the presented ideas are not added to the game. Despite Mojang's perplexing decision to occasionally offer hope that the losers will return, it has never happened. 
This creates a sense that if the mob you loved failed to win, it was gone forever. The 2023 vote was especially notable because the mobs included several long-requested features. The armadillo could be used to craft wolf armor, the penguin would be able to increase boat speed, and the crab would drop a claw that would extend the block placing range of the player, a mechanic that had not been changed in a decade. This combination of possibilities felt especially bad because these were all improvements that people had been requesting. Is extended reach better than wolf armor? That'd be a pretty huge mechanical change, especially for builders. But if the crab won, would tamed wolves forever be naked? Why wouldn't mowing force us to sacrifice the losing features? Why do we have to choose? On online communities such as Reddit, it seemed as though the crab was going to win. Users could select flares for a specific candidate, and Team Crab was chosen by nearly 50%, compared to 30% for the armadillo and 20% for the penguin. For those on the subreddit, the choice was clear. Extra placing range was easily better than wolf armor or boat speed. But when the vote actually happened, something different occurred. The armadillo won by a landslide, beating the other two mobs by 10 percentage points. For some, this was a shocking development. How could this have happened? And the toxicity was cranked up another notch. I saw this firsthand on my Discord server. They came up with ridiculous explanations. Some said that it wasn't a level vote and people with more playtime should have more say. Apparently, not everyone's opinion is equal value. Maybe because people voting were too young or they didn't fully understand the game and were casuals. The excuses were varied and plentiful, anything other than accepting that their preferred mob lost fair and square. And this right here is an excellent example of a phenomenon that has been affecting everything I've mentioned in this video so far. There's a tendency for online discussion forums of games to gravitate towards certain conclusions. This generates beliefs that are held by many in the community. And as you spend more and more time in these online spaces, you slowly start to think that this sentiment represents the beliefs of the broader player base. If most people you talk to online say a similar thing, then surely everyone who plays the game also thinks that thing. But here's the reality. If you're talking about a video game online, you're already in a relatively hardcore group of players of that game. You have an interest beyond just playing it. You want to discuss it, to see how others are playing it, to compare it to yourself. Finding an online community where you can do that is a really great thing. It's so much fun sharing your passions with others. However, it's important to remember that these discussions are not necessarily representative of the overall player base. They instead represent that hardcore group, the people willing to spend time in their day discussing a video game with strangers. Most who play the game aren't like that. They don't browse the subreddit, they're not on Discord, they don't watch YouTube videos about the game. And this is especially true for an exceptionally popular game like Minecraft. While sources vary, approximately 160 million people play the game per month. The Minecraft subreddit has 7.4 million subscribers. The most popular Minecraft Live, the biggest community event of the year, has only about 10 million views. These are all a tiny subset of the total number of players. The fact is, most people who play Minecraft don't care about the things the hardcore community cares about. They might not even be aware of events like Minecraft Live. I've talked to a lot of people in real life who enjoy Minecraft but don't know things that would be considered very basic by a more serious player. Things like how to build a nether portal, what was added in the last update, or even the fact that Java and Bedrock are different versions. And forget about chat reporting, the average player probably neither knows nor cares about it. For a lot of people, Minecraft is just a fun, relaxing block building game. It's not something that requires extensive thought or research to play. Instead, it's an enjoyable way to pass the time. But when you're on Twitter, Reddit, or Discord, you're not with those types of people. You're seeing a limited subset of the player base, a subset that watches every move Mojang makes, a subset that develops its own culture of thoughts and ideas about the game, and one where angry voices are amplified and repeated again and again, a place where negativity can fester and snowball. This entire video, we've been watching the reactions of this group of serious players. Now let me be clear, I'm in this subset. I'm a relatively hardcore Minecraft player. I've been playing since the alpha days and I care deeply about the future of this game. I enjoy talking about it online and making content about it. But I also recognize that I do most of my Minecraft discussion in a bubble of similar people, a place where there's a growing culture of anger and frustration. And it's so easy to get sucked into this negativity, clicking on angry YouTube videos, reading comments, posting your thoughts. And if we aren't careful, these places can become an echo chamber. Negativity builds on itself and breeds more and more negativity. The default state becomes angry, frustrated, irate. I think it's important every once in a while to take a step back and seriously think about the communities that you're a part of. Is there a set of prevailing existing beliefs? Do you ever see people with dissenting viewpoints? Are those perspectives considered or are they immediately discarded? Does the community demonize those who are different or consider them less important than the people within the community? 
Is there a tendency for reactions to become overblown, where relatively minor things are elevated to unnecessary heights? Unfortunately, I think some of this is happening in the Minecraft community. Our journey to this point was the sum of a lot of little things. Some of it was caused by actions made by Mojang, the decision to scrap fireflies, the poor rollout of chat reporting, the teasing of impactful features behind mob votes. Some of it was bad communication, the large overpromise during Minecraft Live 2020, the poorly explained Birch Forest concept art. It's so frustrating because it's not just one thing, it's a slow, cumulative build. Once it gets going, it's hard to slow it down. And unfortunately, I think it still might get worse. However, I have a suspicion that I'm not the only one who looks around and asks myself, is this really the kind of community we want to be? Is this what Minecraft is all about? Is this negativity and anger the best use of our time? This is a complicated problem, and it's a problem that isn't limited to the Minecraft community. No, this is much deeper. If you look around, you'll find that other communities are in a similar state. Sometimes, communities about things that are way more important than Minecraft. I can't tell you why this is happening, but I do think that it's a serious problem. Perhaps the one positive takeaway is that those people I talk to in real life who play Minecraft casually aren't feeling this way. They're enjoying the new cherry blossom biome. They're figuring out ways to outsmart the warden. They're creating new houses out of bamboo. Maybe, just maybe, those people are doing something right. Maybe we as a community need to learn from them. Close Reddit, close Twitter, and go build a cute little house. Take a step away and remember that we're all humans who are passionate about the game. I'm a human, the users on Reddit are humans, the developers at Mojang are humans. Let's just take a breath. We are the Minecraft community and we control its future. I truly hope that we will choose a different path than the one we're on right now. Thank you so much for watching. This is a topic that's been on my mind for several months now, and I hope you enjoyed this analysis. As always, please leave your thoughts in the comments. I'm really interested to hear how you think about this. Do you feel the same way as I do about the community? Is this a problem you've noticed? I want to know. Let's talk about this together. This has been Retro Gaming Now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day.